Hi guys, it's Alex. Welcome back or welcome if you're new. Today I thought I would film an empties video. I love watching empties videos. It's so fun to watch to see what people finished up, what people are interested in, what their thoughts are, if they repurchase it and all of that. Um, this is stuff that I've accumulated over the past couple of months. I'm not someone who has a bunch of things opened at once. So like skincare, hair care, things like that. I tend to have very limited things open. I don't like having a whole bunch of those open at a time. My son's watching a movie, if you hear him, he's he's fine. It's a Curious George Christmas movie. Um, so yeah, I thought I would just share what I have finished with you guys. And I'm hoping to do these every so often once I feel like I have enough product to do a whole video on them. So let's just jump in and get started. I'm not going to go in any particular order. I'm just going to go with what's at the top here. So the first one, I still have like the tiniest bit left, but I'm going to consider it an empty. I've had it for a while. It is not cruelty free either. It is the La Roche-Posay um purifying filming cleanser for normal to oily skin and before i became cruelty free i loved this i used to have all like a whole bunch of these little bumps on my forehead especially and this they were gone within like a couple weeks they were completely gone um if you're not cruelty free or you don't have an interest about cruelty free kind of stuff i would recommend this if you do have oily skin if you do get those kind of annoying bumps this is really, really good. I believe it's also a pretty good price. It was like $15 for a little over 13 and a half ounces. So you get a lot of products. So I'm, I will obviously not repurchase it. Um, La Roche-Posay is not cruelty free, unfortunately. Um, but I'm trying to find something that's similar to this that is cruelty free. If you guys have any suggestions, please let me know. Combo oily skin type. Um, yeah. So there's that. I also have another cleanser here. It's the Acetophil Daily Facial Cleanser. Um, this is just the regular, just normal to oily skin one. Um, I finished this as well. This one, I never, I used to really like this, the Acetophil or Cetaphil. I don't even know how it's pronounced. I used to really enjoy this back like a few years ago. This is the only thing I used to use. Um, that was when I wasn't really breaking out too often or anything like that. I'm starting to break out more now and a whole bunch. This is also not cruelty free. Um, I've had this for a while, so I'm happy I am done with it and I don't have to repurchase it. This didn't help my skin at all, honestly. It was good if I didn't wear makeup. Like there was a time last year where I just did not wear makeup at all. So like this would have been like really nice to use, but I got this a little afterwards. Um, yeah, not gonna repurchase it, not cruelty free, but it is great if you have sensitive skin. Um, I have friends and family members who have really sensitive skin and this works for them really, really well. So it's worth checking out if you don't really care about the cruelty-free status of brands and you're looking for something. I would recommend this to give it a try. For shampoo and conditioner, I finished two shampoos and conditioners. The first ones were the shampoo and conditioner from the brand Monday. Um, I actually really enjoyed this. So I like to have like three shampoos and conditioners open at once and like rotate through them. It just works best with my hair. Um, and these were pretty good. I think I would repurchase these. Um, I'm not, I mean, if I clearly can't find anything that I would want to try or something, I would probably repurchase these again. I believe these are cruelty free. This one is volume for thin and lifeless hair. Um, I don't really think it gave any volume if I'm being honest. I did not notice anything with my hair. I also have pretty long hair so maybe that's why I didn't really get any volume effects from it but I think this does work really well for thin hair I wouldn't say my hair is lifeless um but I was for someone who has fine thin hair this works really really well I do like it I do notice though if I did use it like two or three times in a row or even more than that it just didn't really work with my hair like my hair I didn't get the effects that this was wanting that this is claimed to give, if that makes sense. I mean, I guess I didn't really get any of the claims, but I don't know, I hope you know what I mean. I do like it, but I like to use it, you know, once a week, you know? So I don't know, I would recommend these if you're looking for something for like thin, fine hair like me. I feel like a lot of conditioners and shampoos now are starting to come out with things for more thinner hair. Like I noticed like in the past year or so, I feel like it was always for like thick hair or something. I'm like, I don't have thick hair. Like I have pretty thin hair. Um, but I would definitely recommend these. Another shampoo and conditioner I finished was the Aveeno, what's it called? Aveeno Fresh Greens Blend Shampoo. This one claims to like refresh and thicken your hair. I mean, I don't think anything can really thicken your hair, 
but I I liked this. I did not like the smell. I was actually originally looking for one that was in like a light blue bottle from this line, but they didn't have it at my Target. So I decided to go with this one. I felt like it would have worked best with my hair and it worked pretty well. Again, using this like two or three times in a row is just a no. It just did not work with my hair. I really liked the effects that this shampoo and conditioner gave if I used it like once a week as well. Um, so would I repurchase this though? I honestly don't think I would repurchase this. Um, mainly because of the smell. I really don't like the smell of it. Um, I don't even remember exactly the smell. I did finish this like a while ago, but I don't know. Like it smells very like earthy, I guess you could say like earthy, but like a slight mint to it. I don't know. It's super, it's a super weird scent. I don't like it. Um, I would not repurchase this one in the future. Next for hair, I finished this Kristen S. Fragrance Free Detangling Tonic. Quick detangling, moisture replenishing, softening and strengthening, shine enhancing for all hair types. Now, I used to not put anything in my hair. I used to just shampoo, condition, and just let it air dry. But now I shampoo, condition, air dry, but I put, so I always have to put something in my hair after I get out of the shower. And I really enjoyed this. They have one that's not fragrance free that I actually like a little bit more. I feel like it just detangles a little bit better, maybe because it's a little bit thicker. This was definitely a pretty thin detangler. And the tanglers I used to use when I was younger and stuff and in the past were just a little bit thicker. So I do like how um, the one in the white cap uh, the detangler is a little bit thicker, so I do prefer that one, which I'm using right now, and I'm really enjoying it. But I would definitely repurchase this if they did not have, for some reason, like, I could not find the other one anywhere. I honestly, like, would repurchase this if my hair was shorter, probably. I feel like with my longer hair, that, um, the other Kristen S one that I'm currently using works a lot better. Um, I did get this when my hair was quite a bit shorter. It takes a long time to get through this product. I had it for, oh my gosh... I have this for months, like months, and my hair was, you know, a lot shorter at that one point, and I really enjoyed it a lot more then. So I'd recommend if you have like shorter medium hair, I would definitely recommend this. But if you have longer hair, there is one, a detangler in a white cap that I would definitely recommend over this one. But I would totally repurchase this. It's a really good product. I have a uh, moisturizer here. It's the Verse Dew Point Moisturizing Gel Cream. This is amazing. I actually have another one downstairs that I am using now and I love this stuff. It works the best for my combo oily skin. I use this at nighttime. During the day, I'm actually trying to use up something that is not cruelty free right now that I will have in my next, um, my next video. But I would definitely re recommend this if you have more combo oily skin. I've seen people um, not really like this too much if they have more drier skin. So I would probably shy away from this if you do have more of a drier skin type. But I would say if you're combo to oily, definitely check this out. It's a nice gel. It, they described it well, gel cream. It's not like a thin gel. It's a little bit of a thicker gel that moisturizes perfectly if you do not have dry skin. I believe this is also like $15. I feel like it's a little pricey for like two fluid ounces. I don't know, maybe that's just like the cheapness in me because I don't like to go buy like super, super expensive skincare. I feel like this is something I kind of splurged on if I'm being honest, but I really enjoy it. I love it so much. I have another one that I started like last week. So this is so, so good. Highly recommend checking out. This is sold at Target. I'm not sure if it's sold anywhere else, but Target definitely has this. A couple other things that I finished up was, this was actually in my project pan. I finished this. It's the First Aid Beauty Ultra Repair Firming Collagen Cream. I use this um, in the mornings. So I, right now the moisturizer that I'm using for daytime just doesn't moisturize my skin enough and I am trying to use that up like I just mentioned. So I always go in with another moisturizer afterwards before I actually prep my skin for like with like primer for makeup. And I actually really enjoy this. Unfortunately, First Aid Beauty is not cruelty free. They were cruelty free at one point, but they're not cruelty free anymore, which is a shame because I definitely would have purchased this in a bigger size because it didn't break me out or anything. It was just it was really a product, so I am disappointed. So I'm hoping I can find something that's kind of similar, but there is that. I would recommend this though if you are um, not cruelty-free when it comes to um, skincare or anything. This is really, really good. Um, another thing that I finished was this Tarte Big Ego. I mean, this really didn't last that long, how small it is. I did not like this at all. The wand on here, like, I don't know. It looks like there's still product, like it's still wet, but nothing comes off the brush. Like this wand is awful. Like I, 
it doesn't work for my eye shape it doesn't work for like my, my preference when it comes to mascara and I just I don't like the effect that my lashes had when I used this I don't know how to explain it it's just it didn't it just kind of weighed them down and usually I don't curl my lashes and for this I had to curl them and even then it just it didn't look good it just didn't work with my lashes or anything um I don't really know much about Tarte mascaras if I'm being honest I have one that I haven't even opened yet that I've had for a while that I need to use up but I never hear anyone talk about Tarte mascaras so I don't know if they're like not that like not the greatest mascara out there or not but I definitely did not like the wand on this one for sure a few things left I have I finished my Milani SPF BFF primer and sunscreen I actually am using another one now that I opened today and so I finished this one I probably could have opened the tube up a little bit but I like squeeze like you can tell like I tried to squeeze as much of this out like it's such an odd shape on the bottom like you would have to see it in person it's kind of hard to see on the on the camera but like I was squeezing this out for like a week or two trying to get every little bit out and I think I did so I started my new one today I love this stuff I use this after a moisturizer before a primer I have a lot of steps to prep my skin for makeup just because my skin I have to really get like zhuzh it up before I put on any foundation because no matter what foundation I use my skin if my skin is not prepped the foundation will look like crap like absolute crap even if it's the best foundation on earth like even um my like my color pop uh tinted moisturizer hyaluronic tinted moisturizer you know the pretty fresh one even if I don't prep my skin for that it looks awful like it's my skin is very particular with um how much hydration it wants I don't I have no idea but this is perfect and it feels like I don't know it definitely feels like a sunscreen but it doesn't like feel too greasy like sunscreen like it definitely sinks into your skin I've recommended this so many times on my channel so I think you guys know that I would recommend this because I even bought a second one and I'm obsessed with it I love it so much my last two items here there are two makeup uh setting sprays wow two makeup setting sprays this one as you guys know was in my project pan is the Maybelline lasting fix I actually finished this a while ago so I've been accumulating stuff for a while now I did not like this at all I never liked um I tried I don't remember if it was this particular one but I did try a Maybelline setting spray years ago and it burned my skin like burned my skin it did not feel good at all and this one didn't really do that so I'm assuming it was a different one that I used, but I don't, I, I never liked Maybelline setting sprays. So I'm happy I got this out of my collection and Maybelline's not cruelty free. So I, even if I was not cruelty free, I would not recommend this at all. It's just, it's not, it's not good. I was actually going to use this and put my Urban Decay, um, setting spray in it because my, um, the, what's this part called? The part where the product comes out, gets like stuck. And I was going to use this, but then this one started to get stuck. So I'm like, okay. And then lastly, I just finished this yesterday or two days, two days ago. I finished this two days ago. It is the Ofra Makeup Fixer. Um, this is just the original one, I believe. I opened the rose one and I'm using that one now because I have like two other ones this size I got to try to use up. So I finally finished this one and I don't support Ofra as a brand um, anymore. I haven't supported them for quite a few months now. Um... But I feel like overall this was an okay um, setting spray. I definitely just, I cannot talk. I definitely prefer the Urban Decay, um, the Urban Decay one, or even like the the NYX Bear With Me, the, the Prep Set Refresh one. I would recommend that over, over this one. Um, yeah, so I, I don't think I would recommend this personally, but yeah, I finished it up. And that is it, guys. That is everything in my empties that I have finished in the past, like, month, month and a half, maybe two months. I don't, I don't even know at this point. Um, but, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope to have these somewhat frequently. I don't think I'll have them every month, if I'm being honest. But that's okay. I'll do them when I feel like I have enough products, like I said. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. It would mean so, so much to me. And I hope to see you guys in my next video. Bye.